Hi, I'm Dr. Manish Shah. I'm a board certified psychiatrist and board certified in addiction medicine. And we will talk about the new era in the treatment of depression with the new advances in the diagnosis and also the available technology and techniques in the treatment of difficult to treat or treatment resistant depression patients. I would like to thank for the opportunity that I have received to collaborate our efforts from Achieve TMS centers and Sovereign Health. Um, Sovereign Health has been, as we know, a, a leader in the treatment of uh, residential uh, clients and also various psychiatric conditions. While at Achieve TMS Center, we pride in uh, offering the latest FDA-approved non-invasive treatment for depression, which includes transcranial magnetic stimulation. And we are looking forward to see how we can combine the treatment offered by TMS along with the program that is offered by Sovereign Health and make it the best available option for our clients. I'm going to talk about uh, major depressive disorder as it is one of the most commonly occurring condition for recovery clients, whether you see them in a residential setting, in the IOP setting, or an outpatient setting. Some of the new uh, advances in the field of major depression is in the diagnostics, such as genetic testing, and also in neuromodulation. So my talk today is divided into three sections, first talking about the symptoms and the prevalence of major depressive disorder, then looking at the diagnostic of the uh, major depressive disorder, and finally looking at what we can do and what we can offer to the treatment-resistant depression patients who are also needing recovery treatments. So as we know that um, depression is a widely prevalent condition in our country. Um, the prevalence rate is over 6.7%, and it is more likely to occur with women than in men. There are certain ethnic backgrounds or ethnicities where it is more common, such as um, Alaskan Indians or Native Americans. Um, there is increased incidence of depression in that population. We also know that um, uh, certain uh, populations, such as uh, an elderly white male, is more likely to have depressive symptoms. Um, finally, we know that um, neuropsychiatric disorders, especially depression, um, has become one of the leading cause of disability. And it is expected by 2020 or 2021, depression would be number one cause of disability in uh, Western world. So it becomes all the more important that we diagnose and treat depression correctly. Uh, looking at this graph, you can see uh, what, there is a variation between the men and between men and women in terms of the prevalence of depression. Also, as I mentioned earlier, there are some uh, genetic background ethnicities where there is a higher incidence of depression. Um, and again, at certain age groups, there is an increased prevalence of depression uh, in different uh, parts of the country. Um, one of the new diagnostic methods that has developed over the last uh, few years uh, the first and only uh, blood test for the, uh, which, is, which can be used in the analysis of depression is, it is called MDD score. What essentially it does is it uh, takes the blood sample and it looks at nine different neurotransmitters or chemicals in the, in the blood sample and it gives a score for that patient from one to nine. The higher the score, the more likely this person has a major depressive disorder and uh, that is originating from biological causes, meaning they are having um, changes in their neurotransmitters or transmitters which may be affecting the mood. Um, the second uh, advance that has been implemented lately within the last decade is genetic testing. Um, there are several commercial labs which have been offering this uh, option for our patients, and essentially what they look at, the pharmacodynamic and the pharmacokinetic side of uh, genetics, meaning pharmacodynamic where uh, the medication affects the body or the brain in this case, or pharmacokinetic in which case the body affects the medication, which lets us understand what is the metabolism profile for that medicine. Are these patients um, rapid metabolizer, slow metabolizer, or intermediate metabolizer? And depending on their level or their speed of metabolism of the medication, it helps us determine which medications might be uh, uh, the, the right medication to start with, 
or so that we are not shooting in the dark. As we know in uh, treatment of depression, many times uh, the treatment selection or the medication selection is done by the doctors or the providers on their own personal preference. There is not a very clear algorithm uh, available even now, in spite of having so many medications that we can use in the treatment of depression. So genetic testing can help determine which medication to start with or which medication to follow with. The other thing that the genetic uh, testing offers is, uh, for example, a gene called COMT, or an enzyme, uh, which means uh, catecholamine methyl transferase. This enzyme is responsible for the breakdown of dopamine in the brain, and those people who exhibit higher levels of COMT, they are less likely to respond to the medications which promote dopamine. In fact, there is, there is some data which supports the idea that those patients might uh, respond well to transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS. Again, th these, these two are now some of the new advances that are used in the diagnostics and uh, assessment of depression. The standard protocol for the treatment of depression is starting with therapy, whether it's CBT, DBT, um, psychodynamic uh, therapy. In the case where the patients are in the residential or the recovery programs, they get group therapy, family therapy, and so forth. The second line or the uh, simultaneous treatment includes medications, which could be SSRI, SNRI, which are the serotonin, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Um, there are dopamine reuptake inhibitors, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and other augmenting agents such as antipsychotics as uh, Abilify, or uh, lithium or lamictal, which are some of the mood stabilizers that have been, that have been used in um, uh, augmenting antidepressant to improve the efficacy of that medicine. So the term which has been coined more frequently within the last uh, decade is neuromodulation. And essentially, it means modulating or modifying brain directly at the areas or at the centers which we understand or we know are affecting uh, the mood uh, executive functioning, attention, concentration. The, the techniques or the technology which is used under neuromodulation includes TMS or repetitive TMS, deep TMS that we are going to talk more in detail later, um, DBS which is deep brain stimulation, ECT that many of us are familiar with uh, which involves electroconvulsive therapy, and another FDA approved treatment called VNS or vagus nerve stimulation. Now, as you look at them, we understand that almost all of them, except the TMS or deep TMS, are, the, are, are very invasive procedures. In VNS, um, there is a surgical uh, placement of a pacemaker-like device in the neck area with the electrodes connected to vagus nerve. And the idea is that it keeps stimulating the vagus nerve, and that, in turn, affects the electrical activity in the brain or the neuronal activity in the brain to improve depression. TMS are available in two forms, a surface or repetitive TMS, as it is called RTMS, or the second, the one which we are involved with, the Achieve TMS is involved with, called Deep TMS, developed by the company called Brainsway. Um, what we also know that um, many of the medications are not effective in the treatment of depression. And as we, um, as we try different uh, classes of medication. We also know that there are interactions between them. Uh, many of our patients who are going through recovery and who have long history of depression tend to have many health conditions because they are not uh, very good in taking care of their personal health. So they may have diabetes, which is not very well controlled. They may have heart condition, which is not very well controlled. And in the process, they end up having to take multiple medications and now putting themselves at a risk of uh, medication interactions. When you look at the, the medications that are offered for depression treatment, majority of the SSRIs or majority of, majority of the first and the second trial of the treatments are offered by the primary care physicians because they are truly the, the foot soldiers in the field for those who have depression. And, and uh, federal government has issued some more guidelines as to how there should be more screening for uh, postpartum women or for adult who has come to a primary care physician to make sure that they are not having significant depression symptoms that are being ignored. So nonetheless, the point is that there are about first two or three trials in many cases are done by the primary care physician, then it switches to psychiatrist when the class of the medication switches from SSRI to SNRI, 
and then comes other augmenting agents such as antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, and for those patients who do not benefit from those interventions, then they are referred for neuromodulation. At this time, ECT or electroconvulsive therapy or shock treatment in simple words is still one of the commonly used uh, neuromodulation te uh, technique. But uh, with the understanding of TMS, with the availability of TMS, um, we are seeing that more and more patients and more and more providers are opting for that option. Along with medications comes many side effects. Um, why do our patients who have either depression or anxiety or uh, recovery or addiction issues are difficult to keep their sobriety or keep their compliance? Because when they are prescribed medicine that cause side effects, they are not very willing to continue taking those medications. Typical side effects from an antidepressant medication would be stomach side effect, sedation, weight gain, which is, which is absolutely unacceptable to most, uh, most of my women client, and sexual side effects. And many times the patients are not able to con communicate these side effects to their doctors, but in, in the end, they just stop taking their medicine. And what we have is someone who is not getting the right treatment. Um, if you look at the data from STAR-D study, which was the, the largest non-pharmaceutical, federally funded study to look at creating an algorithm for the treatment of depression, uh, it was shown that as the number of treatments go higher for someone who is not responding to their first, second, or third treatment, their chances of having remission from depression keeps going lower and lower. In simple words, the more trials you need, the less likely you are going to get better. And on the same end, it was also learned that the more trials of medication someone goes through, their chances of having side effects and discontinuation of their treatment goes higher. Well, of course, now with the genetic testing, we understand that the reason many patients do not do well on certain medications is they have certain pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic profile so that the medications which might have worked for their neighbor or their family or their friend is essentially not a good medicine for them. It might be giving them more side effects or it probably is not producing the beneficial effect that is expected. There has been a lot of media debate about the role of antidepressants. You know, there, whenever there is a negative outcome from um, any mental health issue, um, there is conversation about whether the medications actually help and uh, whether the antidepressants actually work or is it a placebo effect. For most antidepressants, the response or the remission rates are between 25 to 35 or 36 percent. If you look at it, it is a very low response rate. However, when you look at the response rates from neuromodulation techniques, whether it is um, ECT or TMS or uh, other forms of interventions, it is a very high response rate. And that's why there is a lot of uh, interest and excitement going on to see how we can make the neuromodulation available as an outpatient basis. Not only that, but reduce the side effects that could be associated with neuromodulation because many of them, they require hospitalization, or surgical intervention. However, TMS is something that can be done on an outpatient basis, does not need any surgical intervention. What happens to those clients or those patients who are not getting their depression under control, either due to side effects of the medicine or because the medicines are not working to begin with? Well, they will try to get treated themselves. They would, uh, they would end up doing what we call self-medication. And that leads to our uh, our, our, our client who is having addiction difficulties. Many times addiction is uh, explained to be a behavioral condition. And for some patients or some clients, it is. But we also know now with the research and you know, our practices that for, for many of our clients, addictions or substance use is merely a form of self-medication. This is not to condone their behavior but this is to offer them the right options so they don't end up repeating that maladaptive behaviors. We know with the addiction, almost 30% of the patients have major depression. And again, if they are not treated right, they will end up having self-medication. Many of these patients also have anxiety. Many of them have bipolar disorder. So we have to do a better job in the diagnosis of this patient and also offering them the right treatment modalities. Um, one of the things we learn in, with our addiction clients and the recovery clients is that they have difficulty following through with the treatment. So they may do well when they are in the, uh, in the detox or they continue with the treatment when they are in residential setup or maybe even when they are in IOP. But once they get past that, then they have difficulty maintaining their outpatient support system. 
and with TMS, if we can improve their depression, then it's a very high likelihood that they will be able to be successful when they are outside of our care or when they are back to their outpatient level of care. Another reason for making sure that we are treating their depression right, we need to make sure is the, the, the severe depression which leads to suicide or suicidal thoughts. Um, we know from the statistics that more than 40,000 people commit suicide in our country every year. And these are the, this is the data just from the ones where it is confirmed suicide. We know that many clients commit suicide and make it look like it was an accidental death. Um, if, you, if you work in an uh, inpatient setting, especially in a hospital setting, you'll see that majority of the patient, more than you know, almost nine out of 10 patients who come to the hospital either due to a suicidal attempt or having suicidal thoughts or intent, they have been under the influence of substances. So either they are going through withdrawal or they are going through intoxication. So substance use and suicidal behavior are very closely related. So that is another reason why we have to address their depression and their mood symptoms. Um, how do we treat depression as an integrative approach? Of course, we have to look at prevention. Depression is just like any other chronic medical condition, be it, uh, be it diabetes or heart condition or high blood pressure. Uh, we know that we have to teach uh, patients to have healthy diet, have uh, regular exercise, maintain a sleep hygiene, um, make sure that they keep enough time for relaxation and you know, uh, meditation or yoga, whatever their preference is. And above all, there has to be understanding and acceptance for the treatment and compliance of the treatment. Because many of the patients, again, once they feel better, they feel that they're out of the you know, out of the woods, as they call it, that they don't need any other treatment, and they try to go back to their previous lifestyle. But at the same time, they still have the same contacts, same friends, same neighborhood, and they end up in the cycle of uh, relapse and again having to need, having, uh, and, and needing the higher level of care with either residential or uh, treatments or IOP. Repetitive TMS involves a technology which uses a machine for superficial stimulation of the prefrontal cortex whereas deep TMS involves a technology which has a specific design of the coil so that the, the magnetic pulses that are imparted have deeper penetration. And this is something we know because there has been PET scan and other neuroimaging studies which have been done to understand the characteristic differences between um, depression and non-depression brains. And as you see in this slide, we know that uh, with the non-depressed state of brain, there is increased activity almost all throughout the brain. Whereas when someone is going through depression, it limits the neuronal activity or the chemical activity that occurs in the brain. Um, PET scan is available uh, for clinical use uh, for most uh, providers for their patients for dementia, but for depression, it is still under academic use or experimental use. It is, it is not used for the diagnosis of depression, but we have enough data to know that there are changes in the brain. Another uh, part looking at the history of neuromodulation, the first and the one and the only treatment that was available until maybe about 20 years ago was uh, ECT or shock treatment. And again, as we know that ECT has also transformed or has evolved over time. It used to be done without anesthesia, it used to be done bilateral, and now we have reached at a point where it is done unilateral, under anesthesia, to, to limit physical symptoms, but it still requires visit to the hospital, it still requ it requires patient not able to drive for between two to four days after the ECT, and having to take time off of work, and above all, it can cause significant memory issues uh, following the treatment with ECT. If you look at the history of uh, neuromodulation, you see that uh, magnetic uh, uh, treatment or transcranial magnetic stimulation um, was first uh, attempted uh, more than 20 years ago. And then gradually it was refined to, to find that site in the brain, which is we understand now is the left prefrontal cortex, which, has, uh, which controls mood. It also uh, helps with the focusing, concentration, and executive functioning. And so all the new devices which uh, involve magnetic stimulation, they focus the magnetic pulses right in that area. Um, I would like to introduce a video of, uh, uh, which is explaining the deep TMS technology as presented by Brainsway. Brainsway Deep TMS, a new era in brain disorder treatment. 
Major depressive disorder is one of the most common brain disorders in the United States, affecting over 6% of U.S. adults annually. The physical source of depression lies in the limbic system, deep within the human brain. Abnormality in the electrical functionality of the limbic system leads to major depressive disorder and other brain disorders. Depression has traditionally been treated with various antidepressants, or ECT, which were designed to regulate the brain's electrical activity. However, those treatments failed to provide an adequate solution, causing side effects or involving substantial risks and adverse effects. Therefore, many depression patients have been trapped in their condition with no adequate solution. Brain's Way Deep Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation, or Deep TMS, launches a new era in the treatment of depression with an effective, safe treatment. Our technology is based on patents filed by the U.S. National Institutes of Health and by the company. Brain's Way Deep TMS treatment utilizes a cushioned helmet, which is fitted to the head of each patient. Within the helmet is Brain's Way's H-coil, featuring a unique patented design. The unique structure of the H-coil performs magnetic stimulation of deeper brain tissues, generating a powerful impact on the mood regulation system. The treatment rebalances abnormal deep brain structures and causes substantial improvement in depressive symptoms. Brainsway's treatment features high efficacy, which has been proven in various double-blind studies. The treatment is effective for a wide range of patients, including persistent cases of depression. Brainsway Deep TMS has been cleared by the FDA for treating drug-resistant depression patients who did not benefit from the use of one or more types of antidepressants. The treatment has been shown to be safe and well-tolerated. Brainsway Deep TMS sessions are approximately 20 minutes long. They require brief daily sessions over four to five weeks and are available in outpatient facilities and private clinics. Brain's Way Deep TMS, stimulating hope. Brain's Way Deep TMS uses a unique magnetic coil which, is, uh, which was developed and designed at NIH and now it is licensed to be used by Brain's Way. And as you can see in the picture, it, uh, it involves you know, multiple segments and multiple circuits essentially uh, focusing the magnetic pulses so that they can go about two and a half times deeper than the traditional or the surface TMS uh, which is available. Um, what it does is it allows not only the prefrontal cortex but the subsequent pathways to be activated and especially in the, in the areas of OCD and addiction medicine, we know that there are deeper structures and deeper pathways which are involved in continuing the pathology of that condition. So having a deep TMS technology allows more areas of the brain to be stimulated and, at this, and, and the pathways to be stimulated, thus limiting the symptoms of those condition. Um, some of the areas which are, uh, interest, which are areas of interest are uh, nucleus accumbens or ventral tegmental area. Um, there is a uh, uh, lot of excitement among scientists uh, that this technology would allow to modulate those areas because those nuclei and those areas are responsible or involved in uh, the pathology of a network of addiction medicine. So a typical uh, uh, protocol of deep TMS uh, involves about a 20-minute session each time. Um, the first time when the patient arrives in the clinic, of course, after they have gone through all the screening to make sure that they are good candidate for TMS, meaning that they do not have any steel-like metal in their cranium, uh, which could cause uh, potential uh, difficulty with the magnet, just like what we have for MRI. Um, if they don't have that, then they are considered to be a good candidate as long as they are um, uh, assumed to be compliant uh, for the treatment and they are, uh, they are able to understand the, the technology that is involved in their treatment. So a typical treatment is 20 minutes long, and it does not need any um, fasting or any change in the medications. Um, uh, most of the patients in an outpatient setting, they drive themselves to the treatment and they drive back to work or drive back to home after the treatment. It does not cause sedation or sleepiness. A person is allowed to drive after the treatment. And for a standard treatment series, 
it, it is recommended that a person goes through 30 sessions. Now, most of them, they start noticing benefit after second or third week and definitely by fourth week. But to have a continued benefit from this, uh, this depression, they are recommended to go through 30 sessions. So they can have five sessions a week for six weeks or their last five or 10 sessions can be extended over, over the next two to three weeks for sustained efficacy. Again, most of the clients that receive TMS have a beneficial effect or control in their depression for up to 12 months or longer. The first day of the treatment with TMS involves cortical mapping. Um, this involves finding that spot on the brain, which, in, which is the motor cortex on the left side in the brain, which controls the, the motor functioning of the right hand. And once we find that spot, the area in the prefrontal cortex, uh, which is responsible for mood regulation, is, is assessed to be five to six centimeters anterior to that motor cortex area. And again, this is an established um, scientific finding which has been uh, replicated in various uh, uh, research uh, uh, groups. Um, the reason we want to address this part of the depression or this treatment resistant depression is because um, at any given time, we know that 55% of the patients do not respond to their first trial of medication. And about 30% or 33% of the patients do not respond to any medication. So we cannot be leaving those patients alone without any help. And as I mentioned earlier, those patients are at high risk for suicide and also for self-medication. So if we treat their depression, their primary mental health condition right, we improve their chances and our chances to have them more relapse-free lifestyle. One of the points that I would like to make about the TMS is there is more interest in understanding the response versus remission. Um, a response is typically when the symptoms of depression decline by 50% following treatment, but they may still have many symptoms which make, them, um, which make it hard for them to maintain their daily lifestyle or go to work or keep their family lives or social life. Whereas remission means um, their symptoms have virtually disappeared or virtually gone so that they can function at their highest level of capacity. That, um, that someone with remission could be uh, working at the hospital or working at an office uh, without any interference from his symptoms into his work or his personal or social life. Uh, with TMS, we have seen over 70% response rate and over 30% remission rate. These rates are significantly higher than any medication, especially when we consider the fact that these are the patients who had failed two or more medication trials before they got this treatment. So I have four different data about TMS and um, their efficacies. So one, as we saw about re response and remission. Another data is about how many sessions of TMS treatments are uh, effective. What we know is that between 20 and 30 sessions, 30 sessions seem to have higher response rate and higher remission rates compared to 20 sessions. Another piece of data that was used by FDA for their approval for this device in 2013 was to compare the response or the efficacy of this treatment for uh, patients who were receiving treatment versus those who were receiving placebo, or in this case, they were called sham treatments. And um, for, for many of us who are involved with clinical trials, uh, when it is involved with medication, uh, patients who are receiving placebo medications, they essentially get sugar pills. But to have someone receiving placebo um, TMS treatment, they had to be having same kind of helmets, same kind of personal experience as if they are uh, hearing the noises, they are, excuse me, they are having um, um, the, the tapping uh, on their uh, uh, forehead so that they would feel that they are getting the treatment except that they are not getting the magnetic pulses. So. That data showed that there is a significant difference between sham and the treatment for response as well as remission. Another piece of information which is uh, uh, important to understand the efficacy uh, and mechanism of this treatment is to see how it compares with surface or superficial TMS. Um, what the data has shown again is that the efficacy of deep TMS is significantly higher in patients who have previously had surface TMS and are having continuous difficulty with the depression or their symptoms. So between the two, again, deep TMS has shown better efficacy, better response and remission rates. In terms of the technology, as we compare the deep and the 
superficial or surface TMS, we find that deep TMS has more areas of activation in the brain as seen in the, in the brain imaging. Um, there is, uh, if you compare the left and the right on this slide, it shows that the left side, which is the figure eight coil, which is the surface or the superficial TMS, has, a, uh, are, has fewer areas of brain activation, whereas the right side, which is the deep TMS, has more areas of activation. And you know, again, it is, it is somewhat um, uh, understandable because of the penetration of the magnetic pulses, it has uh, better activation. At the same time, it does not use higher energy level or more energy compared to the surface TMS. Um, there is stronger clinical data, and we know that deep TMS, because it affects various other nuclei and other pathways, um, right now, uh, Brainsway is conducting clinical trials for OCD, for nicotine dependence, for PTSD, some of the conditions which are hard to treat by the existing forms of treatment. And you know, we expect that uh, in, in, in short period, we may have more indications, uh, approval from FDA uh, for the use of this device for uh, other psychiatric condition. Uh, in Europe, this device has already been approved for, using, uh, for use in various neuropsychiatric condition, including dementia, stroke, um, autism, um, uh, Parkinson's, bipolar, schizophrenia. So uh, right now, as I said, there are other trials going on to look at uh, possible uses for other psych psychiatric and neurological condition. I would like to present a video which shows uh, the, the testimonials or the experiences of the patient who went through that. What you will see is that some of them are wearing the helmet and they are wearing something underneath, which is basically what we have to use for the measurement. This helmet is placed very uniquely for each individual, meaning it's, a, it's, a, it's not a one size fit all, it's not a one uh, shape fit all. For each individual, we have to customize the location and the threshold of the treatment that they are going to receive. I had so much more energy. I have motivation to do things, like things that, hobbies of mine that I haven't done forever. It has seriously changed everything. I would see like these videos and everything like that and would say, it's changed my life. And I was like, oh, whatever. No, literally I'm seeing it now. So it's kind of crazy that I'm reiterating what everyone else has it said. It took me until the third week to really understand and accept that the depression was lifting. And that was the most transformative thing that's happened to me in my lifetime. People have recognized changes in me through the deep TMS treatment. Especially my wife, she's happy with what's going on. I enjoyed life for a change. So I could, the sunshine, I could, my wife's my smile. I could relate to different things. I would recommend deep TMS treatment to anybody who's suffering depression because I think it gives your life back. I have really experience something dramatic. It changed my whole life. I'm hoping that um, people will see me and know there's an answer. Uh, there's a solution. Uh, what medication and therapy couldn't do for me alone, Deep TMS did. As we discussed, Deep TMS is also looking at other indications, and there are clinical trials going on for that. So the difference would be that they are developing uh, magnetic coils with different configurations. You, look at, you looked at the H coil, which is FDA approved for the treatment of depression, but there are going to be different coils uh, with different helmets, which can be used for different um, neuropsychological or neuropsychiatric uh, conditions, which could be anxiety, addictions, OCD, um, and other neurological conditions such as Parkinson's and stroke. At this time, this device is used in majority of the, the premium um, academic institutions. Uh, TMS has also been, is being adopted by, uh, by Navy, and uh, there has been um, uh, some interest in seeing if we could use this towards uh, application for PTSD that we see with our veterans. Um, again, the data is still pending to make it a, uh, a mainstream treatment for PTSD yet, but definitely it is becoming a mainstream in most of the academic institutions, most of the urban institutions um, at this time for major depression.
I would like to thank Sovereign for uh, having the, for creating this opportunity to uh, uh, create a synergy uh, between uh, their excellent programs for the treatment of uh, many um, conditions on the residential setting and IOP settings, and combining that with the state-of-the-art new technology with the deep TMS as offered by Brainsway and Achieve TMS Center. Thank you. <laughs>